Hello everybody, welcome back to RP1. About a week ago, a helpful commenter asked if I could do a tutorial on how to get to orbit, and unfortunately I already had last week's episode uh, in the works, so I wasn't able to do it then. But today, I have the time, so we are going to do a tutorial on how to start the 1957 Heavy Satellites program. Um, and uh, next week, I think I'm also going to take a second and do the 1957's Light Satellites, because it is slightly different. But I think it's a good place to start. I've never done a how to orbit tutorial. I did uh, how to speed run the first program as well as how to install RSS Reborn, but uh, how to orbit is something different, so uh, I'm pretty happy to start it off. Um, basically, we start off January 1st, 1957 in the dark. Uh, I don't recommend doing what I'm doing right now, time warping to the morning. Uh, it's not a lot of time you waste, but you do waste a little bit of time doing that, that the scientists could be researching, things could be building. Um, so technically, you don't actually need to make it daylight until uh, you've already put in your first rocket. But I wanted uh, to let you guys see where I'm clicking and what I'm doing. So, But when you do it, just uh, go ahead and avoid that stuff for now. Anyways, we look into the Space Center Management. We've got nothing going on. Uh, this is a brand new save, after all. And uh, this is one of the newer features. You didn't used to have the ability to start off on uh, 1957. As we see here, the program's already selected. Uh, I'd take a second and choose your leaders and um, contractors, but uh, for this tutorial, we don't necessarily need to do that. Um, but when you do it yourself, I would recommend starting off that way since you have the ability to select people. But we are going to get started first in the science development. As you see here, we have a bunch of things unlocked in the 1957 scenario. Um, but uh, what we're gonna wanna do is we have 10 points available and we're gonna wanna spend those 10 points before we build anything because during that time, the scientists could be unlocking this stuff. Uh, you have the ability to go through and get quite a few of the solid rocket boosters if that is uh, something you're interested in. Um, however, we are going to select the 1958 Orbital Rocketry uh, node, and that is uh, all we have to do, because those engines are going to be great for us moving forward. So let's go ahead and hire all of our researchers. We have 660 applicants, so we're going to put every single one of those into um, research and development. We can always hire engineers to build the rocket later. Uh, currently, if we were to hire engineers, they'd just be sitting around doing nothing because there is nothing to build. So we're going to put all the science in, and it's going to give us that uh, technology in March, March 27th of the same year. So now, before we get ready to build, let's go ahead and grab ourselves the contract, which will make it easy once we test to see whether or not the rocket can uh, accomplish the desired goals. So the first one we're going to take is the 30 kilogram satellite. Uh, and that is uh, definitely achievable with the design that we're gonna be building today. So now this is by no means, you know, the official design or anything like that. This is literally just what I've been doing that has been working for me. And I just kinda wanna share some of the things that I've learned along the way. Uh, so we are gonna first take a look at our orbital engines. This is one of the most important things to choose. Uh, I'm going to go with the RD-108-109 configuration. I just happen to be a big fan of the RD series. Uh, we use the RD-8 as our lifter, the RD-7 as our side booster, so why not use the RD-10... Uh, now I'm forgetting which one it is, the 108. <laughs> uh, 105, excuse me. Um, so we are going to be using this to get ourselves uh, into orbit, and this is going to be our primary workhorse engine uh, moving forward uh, in this save anyways. So now we are building the stage. Don't be afraid to give it some mass, um, some width to it. I'm sure many of you are probably more comfortable with smaller size rockets, but this is the heavy satellites program, so there's no, there's no shame in having it a little bit beefier. It does need to weigh a certain amount anyways, so, uh, you know, the next contract is going to be a thousand kilograms, so we we need to uh, be okay having a larger larger craft. So we're going to put on the separator here. I push it out the width a little bit larger. I didn't need to do that. I just uh, was worried about it clipping into the side. But after uh, later inspection, I see that it would have been fine. I could have just had it flush. 
so now we are building the lower stage which is uh, starts off with uh, avionics that will control the whole rocket followed by fuel tank and then another fuel tank as a cone I know a lot of people make uh, make some pretty good use out of uh, fairing shells oh real fast we are going to select the um, unresearched version of this the un the not the as to yet be unlocked version of the RD-108 because that is uh, unlocked in 1958 orbital rocketry and that is exactly what we're researching right now by the time we uh, by the time it takes us to build this rocket we will have already researched 1958 orbital rocketry so therefore we might as well uh, set up uh, set ourselves up to use the most recent technology available so now we are putting on the side boosters. I have three tanks uh, here, one for the body, one for the tail, and one for the nose cone. Uh, the tail, we're gonna go ahead and turn into a cone, and we're going to uh, give it a little bit of a taper towards the bottom, uh, a little bit of aerodynamics added there. Uh, fairing, uh, clamshell fairings work well here as well. You don't necessarily need to use a tank to uh, achieve that kind of uh, look however I just I like utilizing the fuel aspect there but uh, clamshell fairing weighs less so it is slightly lighter but then you know you just have to put that fuel in uh, elsewhere anyways so now I'm gonna move our side boosters down however the decoupler I left a little high it honestly could be put like right about here and be fine probably be better off we don't have any problems with it in our design however it's just I mean it's good to have your decouplers a little bit higher on your side boosters but I mean this high is a little ridiculous so uh, we have looking at our Delta V we have tw uh, 12,524 I believe it's somewhere to the tune of 11,000 11, that you need in order to get to orbit so it's good to see this number already uh, higher as we add on some separatrons to help us with our ullage, you see that we actually lost a little bit of delta V because they actually weigh more than you would think. Uh, it's surprising how adding uh, adding them on can adjust your weight and delta V. So, uh, and and technically, as we'll see later, once we put on RCS, you're not going to need those, but we'll leave it on anyways. Now I am adjusting all the battery. We had way too much battery in our stuff. I'm lowering the transmitting power of our communications. As you see, every single action is adjusting our delta V, typically for the better, as we uh, get rid of the excess weight uh, that we don't need, excess energy. It's always important to look at your uh, energy totals. So now comes time for the first test, and we immediately see uh, that we had forgotten something and some, something very important uh, You want to take a second and uh, place your guess on what it is that uh, we forgot As you see here our avionics control has enough control to bring ourselves back into position So technically not a uh, complete failure. However, uh, we lost a lot of momentum by pointing down so if any of you answered wings, then you are correct. Uh, your wings, when you put them on here, will not look like this. They'll most likely be large rectangles. Longtime viewers of my channel know that I have a, a little bit of a glitch here. And for some reason, no matter how many new saves or new installations of this game, uh, the default <laughs> uh, or the wing shape that I last put in as my default stays. So. Nonetheless, we put on some control surface here. Make sure to keep the blue circle below the yellow circle. That is the center of lift below the center of mass to keep it nice and level. So we have a few more things that test uh, told us that we uh, could use with a little bit more control. So we're gonna put on the spin stabilizers right here on the center of mass um, to help us go. But like I mentioned before, those uh, separatrons are heavy and uh, did uh, result in less delta v but i just didn't like them uh, you know we need more control in this and having it as a science core just unfortunately wasn't good enough uh, so we're going to turn it into um, a fully controllable probe which will actually behoove us later because it'll be more beneficial to have control as we bring ourselves into orbit as we change ourselves into a lunar excuse me a lunar uh, inclination all that so Having uh, regular avionics there 
we'll be fine. Uh, but having the RCS is going to be crucial because we're going to need uh, an ability to kind of slightly adjust ourselves and put ourselves in the position that we need. We get rid of the spin stabilizer so we don't need to actually spin because we have proper control now. Um, however, we do leave on the separation motors that will help us with our ullage. Get our controllable mass into the right position and then put our lower stage back on. And we still have 13,000 delta V, so we uh, should be getting to orbit. I'm going to put up the ascent guidance so you can pause here and look at all the relative information if you need to adjust it for yourself. And now I'm going to bring up some of the other screens, the orbit info and the delta V snat, so you can kind of keep an eye on how things go as it launches. But this is uh, a mech jeb launch, so it's relatively uh, uneventful, if, as long as it, everything goes according to plan, uh, it will do everything for us. But I will take a second after this is done and look at an alternative launching profile. I am speeding up the footage here to make it a little bit faster. You will need to sit and uh, let this burn out. A lot of the times people will physics warp to make it faster, but, uh, and, and it will, you know, you'll save a lot of time that way. But I've, I've found, and I can't prove this for certain, but I found more errors during the time that I'm physic warp physics warping than uh, if I just let it run at a uh, normal time. So typically, uh, and especially when doing things of an importance, uh, I let it run in real time. Uh, but as you see here, we have now successfully reached our desired apoapsis and periapsis, an exact 180 by 500. Uh, we still had some fuel left over. MechJeb decided to cancel it early, but nonetheless, that has successfully completed the mission. So we can now build ourselves a launch pad for it. We can tool it. I wouldn't tool it till you know, you've had uh, the science unlocked, but nonetheless, this is ready to go. You have 1957 um, heavy satellite program uh, start in the bag. But like I mentioned, I'm gonna show you one more version and that is to do it by hand. And uh, I launched manually for much of my RP1 career. It, I've only just recently started mech jeb. So to use smart ASS, first you wanna put your uh, SAS on to keep control, but then once you have about a hundred meters per second uh, Acceleration you just pitch over about one degree every 15 to 20 meters per second of acceleration Until you get to about 40 or 38 um, And then you're gonna want to aim for a higher apoapsis than you did with mech jeb um, Right now our apoapsis is about 257 and climbing a little bit, but um I, I don't know, when I tried to pull the exact same flight profile as MechJeb did, uh, I just came up short here. Uh, so I decided to give myself a little bit more time to burn in high space, well, not high space, but higher space above the Earth's surface. And that was the trick. It allowed me to have enough time to burn my periapsis out into the other side. So as you see here, once you get to that stable uh, zero degree inclination. Um, you get to your desired apoapsis and then you press the zero key on the smart ASS and uh, you level out. And uh, that's all you really need to do. Um, I did forget to mention that uh, you do have to keep an eye on the delta V stats to uh, stage when appropriate because MechJeb is not doing it automatically. You're the one in control, so that means you have to keep an eye on your staging process, but uh, that should be relatively easy. Uh, I can go into a little more detail in that in the next tutorial if you need. Uh, as you see here, we're kind of struggling to hit that 150 periapsis, um, but uh, so we pitched down a little bit and that does help us kind of come up. But now we have successfully completed all the parameters for the mission, so all we have to do is check for a stable orbit. And because uh, MechJeb uh, isn't there to cut our throttle, we just cut it ourselves. However, you could burn longer and give yourself a higher apoapsis, which could be useful uh, if you're doing uh, a solar panel on this probe. However, if you are doing a solar panel, I strongly recommend launching at nighttime uh, to give yourself the highest daytime. But anyways, that is the first artificial satellite 30 kilogram contract completed in the heavy satellites start, both by MechJeb and uh, manually. 
Uh, if you like this, consider subscribing. I am going to do a light satellites program uh, tutorial next time. I've also done two other tutorials in RP1 uh, that you see on screen here. And uh, I'm pretty excited to do more of this as well. And if you didn't know, I do a playthrough of RP1 on Wednesdays. But anyways, that is where I'm going to leave today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're looking forward for more RP1 tutorials. If you did, think about subscribing. Drop me a like, let me know your thoughts, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.